probably it's financially, because of the cuts across the arts sector, I mean, Aspects got cut in the last funding round by 56% in our Arts Council uh, last round. You know, it does mean that we have to be more responsive because we've got to, although we are still driven by grants and donation, you know, we need to sell items in our shop, and we need to sell items in our, you know, food in our cafe to, because all that money gets reinvested into to keeping the gallery going. So we have to make sure that what we have on is appealing to people. So that kind of feeds in because obviously there has been a, there has been a big explosion when it comes to urban art, you know, driven by Banksy. I think there's definitely a realisation throughout the art sector that you need to work hard to get your visitors in and um, you need to listen to what they want. I mean, you've got to, I think you've got to get a balance between challenging people um, and putting interesting stuff on, but also uh, putting exhibitions on that people can generally um, appreciate and um, associate themselves with. So, it, you know, there's, there's definitely a balance to be had. Because you know, a lot of us are publicly funded, and the more people we get through the doors, the more value that that public funding is, is given. So yeah, I, I think um, yeah, it, it's 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 very difficult to compete with something that's just out there. London's a different market, I think that's, that's like just because there are more galleries and more ga galleries can cater for more specific things, but I think there's, you know, we, we have to be open to all different mediums and that includes urban art as well. It's superb because you can articulate sort of ideas from a personal level uh, and you can share them and if you're slightly idiosyncratic or you've got a slightly slanted perspective of the world, you've got a, a, a way in terms of allowing your voice to be heard and it's a meeting place for, for people and it's to many, in many respects it's universal which I think is quite handy especially in this world of, uh, of interconnectivity the language and value of visual arts, I think, is even more important than it's ever been. I think, I think, to some people, that's its appeal because, obviously, I think sometimes the art world, you know, the gallery art world, can seem, you know, as we kind of been talking about, kind of impermeable and, and complicated, and whereas obviously there's no you know, no mucking about when it comes to urban art and it's supposed to be very egalitarian and, you know, and everyone gets involved. So I think that's, that's the difference, I suppose. So, and, you know, they form informal networks of, between artists and, you know. But, um, I mean, I think it's changing where things do are sort of converging and, you know, more grants are available for people doing community projects, um, you know, than us and urban artists can work together or, you know, that, that there's more money available for those sort of things. Sometimes you, you get mixed views. I mean, some, some people, some members of the public love it. They ask you questions, they want to get involved, they, they want to know more about it. Other people, they, they hate you, they don't like you. And, um, people just think you're some punk kid, spray paint at some walls. It's a friend. It's a friend thing. It's like these are all these are all my mates. You know, I've, I've grown up with these lot doing it.
I don't, I don't know how long you know we've been down here for. This isn't just something we just throw up in half hour, ten minutes. We've, we've spent time in our sketchbooks at home. Um, we've spent time emailing each other, working out colour plans, what we're going to do in the background. <coughs> It's, like, it's the most popular art form, it's the longest going art form, it's been, you know, and, it, and it's, it's getting bigger, more and more people are doing it. I'd say it has a factor in street art's popularity is the fact that it is so accessible by members of the public, you know, a member of the public can walk past a tag, a throw up, a piece and appreciate it without having to step over the threshold into a contemporary gallery. They can just boom, see it in front of their face, you know, that's important. But I enjoy both, you know. I like going to a nice gallery that's well laid out and is showcasing modern contemporary and intellectual art but then I also enjoy tags and throw-ups and train graffitis too, so. Private commissions as well, I think, you know, I think for urban artists, you know, private commissions are quite a big thing now. I mean, we've had quite a few people ask us about some of the people in Creating Balance doing stuff, and we might be talking something small, we might be talking about doing something in, in a son's bedroom, we might be talking about doing someone's wall outside their business. I mean, you know, there's been a few of those pop up in towns recently, but, you know, it's still ways of them funding themselves to get, you know, to carry on doing what they want to do. When we have featured those art, like for instance, creating balance is probably the biggest experiment we've done with that. Is hosting, you know, and it, it's um, yeah, I think it, it it can definitely, and I think it's just being part of the mix, and I think it's you know us need, w needing to be you know appreciative of all forms of art, um, and urban art just being part of the mix that we put on. I don't see them as different things, they're just um, sort of chapters in the same book really um, and if you look at it in, a, uh, in an art historical sense there's been sort of happenings and interventions and site specific work which echoes the um, sort of the nature of urban and street art. Um, you think, I don't know, sort of graffiti, what is that? Sort of, it's Roman isn't it? It's, sort of, so it's, um, it's way back in the day that kind of thing. For example, you know, you can walk through Southsea and you can see stuff that, that's on, you know, that's there free to see and it's in the middle of everything and you can stand there and appreciate it and then you walk on. Whereas, obviously, especially, you know, with us being in Gunwharf, we're more of a destination location that you have to make in your mind think, oh, I'm going to go to Aspects. Um, but I think that's it and I, I've really, really tried to break down those barriers about the whole kind of white cube space and it's a, a stuffy environment that's quiet and I think that you know we're trying to do that to make it more accessible and I think if urban art encourages galleries to be more like that that's not a bad thing. Mm -hmm.